Welcome back to Mexico for the fourth round of the FIM MX1 MX2 Motocross World Championship. My name is Paul Mayling. We're at the circuit of Nico Espana, or the Motodromo Nico Espana, just outside of Guadalajara. We're 1,700 meters up above sea level, so uh, on a par with Denver, Colorado, if you're familiar with the circuit there. The backdrop here, very similar as well. A little bit, you've got the, the, the ground down below here, but the backdrop behind the camera here, a little bit primitive. Uh, Probably somewhat more reminiscent of where Freddie Flintstone would live and the guys back in the day, but uh, beautiful serene scenery, to say the least, but um, the riders really having a lot to deal with this weekend. High altitude, high temperatures, high winds as well. Uh, dry conditions yesterday in the qualifying races, but we've already spoke about that already, but uh, a lot of water on the track, as you probably saw from MX2 at the moment, or just a moment ago. And, uh, well, let's see what happens in MX1. But the town of Guadalajara uh, itself, uh, pretty old in its uh, nature and uh, while they've actually retained a lot of the, uh, the original features it is actually quite modern and uh, known over here as the Pearl of the West so uh, pretty spectacular as you drive through on the way through to the hotels and that kind of thing but uh, in terms of the racetrack, a brand new venue, Sebastian Tortelli, the former two-time world champion, co-promoting it with Nico Espana, the owner of the land, and the, uh, the circuit named after him as well. But uh, we've got some good crowds here, considering. And this uh, circuit here, 1,500 meters long, challenging in more ways than one for the riders. Very first split sectors, left-hander through that first turn. And then as they head through the middle of the wave section, uh, the riders hit that first split point then it's the uh, the more my jump over on the far side of the circuit and of course the third and final split sector the uh the line jump all right we'll try and do our best to bring the translation here because you can't hear that at home uh, marco Medashki of uh, silver action ktm saying that uh, Go and firm up. We've got many riders in Silver Action KTM this year. We have two riders in MS1, David Venere and Michal Kochu. We've got two riders who will race in the European 250 as well. The French rider, Robert Capel, and uh, the Swedes, Philip Bengtsson. We've got two riders in 125 Europeans, Jonathan Luka Veggie, and also Tim Geiser, uh, who's showing to be a fast rider in the European Championship. And uh, maybe next year you can go MX2 with them and have a good season. Amy Dargan said that uh, we saw Tim last week in the European 125 Championship pretty good for this year as well. Uh, uh, says that, uh, yeah, we can save it to Geyser if it's wrong, right? With our help and his ability, he can win the European title. That's our hope. But then Amy Gargan said, uh, Davide, as she interviews uh, Davide Veneri. You can see on screen right now. Davide, how are you settling in at Silver Action? Says, uh, how are you settling in at Silver Action? She says, uh, yep, for the past two years, I've been out of Italy. It's nice to come back with Silver Action because uh, they're also really friendly to me. They speak Italian, it's easy to understand. Um, it's nice to you, uh, well, you can enjoy it and go racing with the Italian guys. Yes, you know, it's really nice because 450... In terms of uh, riding the 350 compared to the 450, David Canary said, yeah, you know, it's a really nice bike because uh, for sure with the 450 you have a bit more power. Get some traction and make some time, but with the 350 you have really, uh, well, the power and also the handling is uh, really nice. You know, makes uh, a nice passes for the riding it. Really hard uh, in terms of his home GP in Italy, how is he feeling bike, about that? Uh, well, you yeah, know this year MX1 is really uh, hard, with a lot of good guys, and a lot of good race. bikes, but and we're and here to fight every time and every race, and for sure the Italian GP is a home race, and it'll be tough to race here, but we have a lot of crowd coming, and it'll be nice to race with them also. Next rider Amy spoke to was Tim Geiser. Yeah, of course. This year I will drive all races 1 to 5 and also 250 European Championship. Maybe at the end of the season I will try one, uh, one Grand Prix. So uh, Tim uh, Geiser being asked, you leave the 125 European Championship. Are you planning on riding yeah, only the MX2 or the Euro MX250? He says, well, yeah, I'm riding 125s and 250 European Championship. Maybe end of the season some Grand Prix and see what happens. But the plan at the moment will be 125. And obviously Bulgaria was a good weekend for him. He said, yeah, it was. Uh, he won two times, so uh, he feels really confident. So we'll see what happens now. Tim Geiser, of course, the championship leader in uh, 125 European. Uh, obviously, uh, he won both races in Fermo. Said, uh, yeah, he said, uh, I won both times in Fermo last year. Felt really confident, so I like the track and hope for the best. Well, the third rider 
never spoke to yeah, him for a moment Moldovia a few weeks ago. Here's Mihal Kochu. Obviously from Moldova, Mihal, the only Moldova in the World Championship, has experience. So well, in all of Moldova, there are only three riders other than me. Two in 65, one in 85. And then there's the first year for me in MX1. It's pretty tough. There are so many strong riders, but it's also a new experience for me. And I'm happy to be here with all of these riders. And of course, uh, it's first year at MX1 in the championship. But what are your expectations? That was from Amy Dargan. And he said, uh, yeah, I'd like to score some points. And I'll be happy with my family and my friends during the MX season. Welcome back to Mexico for the uh, fourth round of the FIM MX1, MX2 Motocross World Championship. My name is Paul Malin. You join us live on MX Live TV and, of course, Motors Television at home in Europe. Uh, we're about six hours behind you in the UK, seven hours behind the European time. So uh, 10 past seven in the evening or thereabouts. And uh, well, here, of course, is getting ready. 10 past one in the afternoon, the MX1 rise, the riders getting ready to go out on track. Well, they've been out on track. They're getting ready to come out on track. Here's how they qualified. Well, it was, uh, I'm sure you know by now, quite an interesting qualifying session. And uh, yeah, the riders, Deciding not to go out in the qualifying race yesterday in MX1 and MX2, but uh, those that did, it was a uh, a good victory in the end for Rodolfo uh, Fernandez, winning comfortably by nine and a half seconds, and then it was uh, Martin Garcia, the two-time Mexican European champion, then uh, Renier Mejia, Mario Farfan, Donovan Garcia, Giuseppe Vasquez, Samuel Rodriguez, Diego Mendoza, and uh, Jesus Rosales. Uh, Jose Luis Guzman was in 10th. But then it was uh, the rest of the guys uh, who didn't start. Uh, Tanel Leo, uh, Jonathan Berrigan, Kenny Dyke, all those guys in numerical order. But uh, their times, the position that they went with the grid uh, by way of uh, how they lined up in the pre-qualifying practice. And uh, in MX1, that would then be the likes of Tony Cairoli, Xavier Borg, Christophe Corsal, Commander Sal, Sean Simpson. And uh, David Philippots, Kenny Dyke, and Tanel Leox, Stephen Frossard, Jesse Paulin, and David Veneri, and the rest. Uh, no Evgeny Bobrachev this weekend, suffering from bronchitis. Uh, he was out in the States last week with uh, Honda, uh, riding the new 2013 Honda machinery, uh, doing a photo shoot out there. And obviously, somewhere along the way, he picked up a bit of a, a cough. It's turned into an infection. So Evgeny Bobrachev not going to be riding, and he's going to lose out points. I was talking to their press girl, uh, Jenny Dick, uh, earlier this morning and said not even sure if he's even going to turn up to, to watch the race today. Uh, so pretty much laid low in the hotel room is Evgeny Bobrashev. So, uh, Bobby, uh, I know you can't hear us at the moment, but uh, get well soon, buddy, and hopefully we'll see you uh, in a week's time in uh, Brazil. Martin Garcia is our onboard camera, and uh, obviously that's second place in the qualifying race yesterday, holding him in a good position in terms of a position going up into the start line area. Um, that's the run. It's an uphill start here. Dave Nickel, oh, first time we've seen Dave Nickel, our race director today, actually. So uh, there he is down on the start line. He's got the green flag, as always. The two Monster Energy girls, stage left, getting ready to hoist up the board. Championship leader there, Tony Cairoli, 2.22, the Red Bull KTM rider. He's uh, just pulling into his position now on the gate, so probably around about 11th or 12th to the grid for him. And uh, Cairoli, who has a 17-point advantage over Gertier Paulin and another 10 points over Christophe Porcel, it's going to be interesting to see which way this race goes because obviously the, the hard pack tracks just recently we've seen the French guys leading the way. And despite Tony Cairoli winning the, the, the third moto or the second moto uh, in Fermo just a couple of weeks ago, he uh, pretty much was 
before that, outclassed in that first race, but he made up for it in the second race and rewarded his home fans with a victory in his home race. Sean Simpson there, just uh, sorted himself out. The number 25, Commander Sal, the Rockstar Energy Suzuki World MX1 rider. Kenda Dyker as well, number nine, Rebel KTM, Jonathan Farragan, the LS Honda rider, all this side of the box. Now it's an uphill first turn and a very steep banked turn as well, like a big sweeping left-hander. Probably not too similar to Glen Helen, the Talladega turn, or, uh, well, you can see it there, look. Obviously, we didn't see what happened in the MX2 race in terms of how the riders got around there, but we do have a po uh, camera positioned up there. Right, a 15-second board. Any moment, that'll turn to five, as always. Around about now, and the guys look down, they select second gear, it's slightly firmer behind the gate than it is over the gate. 121, Xavier Borg, how did he get up the inside? Well, he gets a good jump, comes across, and it's uh, Christophe Porcel. Porcel gets a good jump, so too does Clement Sal, or maybe even Tonel Lyot, as they head down through the, uh, the drop down into turn two. David Philippot's there in about fourth position as he tries to sneak up the inside. Cairoli there in second place. To Sal now goes second, Cairoli third, Philippot's fourth. Ford goes four, is that fifth? Or maybe fourth, uh, Porcel, I think. In second place. Oh, we've got a big crash over the whoops, uh, over the waves, over the far side. A rider just getting it wrong there. Oh, Paulan's gone down. Who else has gone down there? Is that Simpson? It might be Simpson. Xavier oh. Borg's definitely gone out. So not looking good then, maybe for Sean Simpson. So that's our race leader, Christophe Porcel. De Sal came through in second. Tony Cairoli was third. Well, Simpson was in fourth uh, as he hit that wave section. So maybe it wasn't Sean Simpson that went down. Rudon Salvez fifth. Maybe it was Simpson. Xavier Borg went down. So yeah, maybe Simpson and uh, Borg. So Kevin Strybos, uh, well, he made a good start as they came through the intermediate. There's uh, Gonsalves. There's Big Ken de Dijka. Sebastian Porcel going through. So Commander Sal then. It looks like to have challenged uh, Christophe Porcel for the race lead, and it's very important to get the, a good advantage here. You need to be leading the way. A mistake there. He gets the high line over the little kicker. Did uh, Porcel. And Commander Sal then comes over the line in first position ahead of Christophe Porcel. Then it's Tony Cairoli in third. Fourth is Ruin on Salvez. the riders to come through over our timing monitor. Kendra Dijkert now in fifth position. Then it's Sebastian Corsell, Dean Ferris, Kevin Strybos, Jonathan Clarence, Lucio Paulan, David Maneri, Mattis Caro, Tanel Leox, Steve Crossart, and through the wave section there. That's where uh, Simpson went down. And it, it's very tricky through there anyway. Had to carry so much speed to get the center through. Rush to uh, try and close in on the guys ahead of him. He'll try and get a nice clear track as uh, well. Big stake there from Commander Sal as he came into that right hand turn. Dropping down over the tabletop. About 15, 20 meters, something like that through there. Keeping it nice and tight to the inside, staying out of the lake. And then Commander Sal. the outside over on that top side of the circuit. Too muddy on the inside. That will probably develop though as the uh, race goes on. But it's to Sal, Porcel, Kai Roli, Gonsalves to Dijka. And then we've got Sebastian Porcel. Dean Ferris, a good start for him on the Ice One race at Kawasaki for the Australian rider. Riding for uh, Kimi Raikkonen's uh, own team. Kimi and the guys would have been in Barcelona at the Formula One today. Not sure how the result went there. Left it halfway through breakfast this morning. Uh, all I knew that was uh, Fernando Alonso was leading before I left. But Commander Sal, Rockstar Energy Suzuki, World MX Squad, leads the way at the moment.
That's the gap between him and second. And third, Cairoli having a look back to see who's there in fourth place. It was Rui Gonçalves last time around. Track a little bit wider maybe in one or two places than it was just uh, 30 minutes ago. But you can see the urgency that Christophe Borsal had when he uh, realized that Commander Sal was starting to close in on him. The Diker now in fourth place. So Ken De Diker, the Red Bull KTM rider, He's down in fourth, that's him just coming into view, just behind his teammate here, Tony Cairoli, and look at that. A new change of lead between uh, De Sal and uh, Christophe Porcel. It was a good jump for Xavier Borg. Xavier Borg down in 17th place now, though. But it was uh, the Suzuki of Kamal De Sal around the outside with uh, Porcel just getting a jump. This is uh, Martin Garcia. Look at the power there of the Monster Energy Kawasaki of Porcel. Came across. Borg held a nice tight line initially. That's Ken Dijker just ahead of him. There's Frossard. Frossard down in 14th place this, that time around. And that is Caro. So Caro now in 13th place on the STR, the Steve Turner racing. Uh, oh, Caro looked like he almost went over the bars there as he dropped downhill for the first time. Uh, losing our leaders at the moment, but it was the Sal. But we realised he'd uh, been passed by Paul Sal a moment ago. Not yet sure if they've come over the finish line again. Oh, that was the aftermath of the crash as uh, Garcia came through. Oh, there was two lots of crashes there through the wave section. Not sure which one then was uh, was Sean Simpson involved in. But Martin Garcia. Tano Leoc just ahead of him, just coming out of that turn. But back with uh, real timing. And our leaders are so fast, we can't even pick them up on the circuit. Whoa, David Philippartz. Just going through Philippartz. Where is Philip Arts? Philip Arts, way down the order. Maybe Philip Arts is one of those guys. Well, he's down in 27th last time around. So uh, a lot of work for him to do. Maybe he was also one of the riders that caught, got caught out on that opening lap. So it was the Sal, poor Sal, and uh, that refreshed itself again. Is that a Philip Arts monster in Yamaha rider? Originally showing down in uh, 27th. Just wondering if we've still got riders out there, actually. I can't <laughs> oh, here we go. Back with the action. Christoph Porcel continues to lead Komodo Sal, Tony Caroli, and Kenny Dyker. They top four. Rui Gonçalves is fifth on the Honda World Motors uh, Motocross MX machine. Ross Drybos here in seventh. Gautier Paulan is eighth on the official Kawasaki. Barragan ninth. And Dean Ferris, Ice One Kawasaki rider, in tenth. David Guarnieri, Silver Action KTM, is eleventh ahead of the Suzuki Rockstar rider of Tenor Leoc Frossard. Mattis Caro down in fourteenth. STR KTM. Xavier Borg, fifteenth. Uh, Santu Tienen, sixteenth. Then we've got Fernandez, Magia, Garcia, and uh, Rodriguez. David Philippartz, one of our riders who was uh, unlucky on that opening lap. So too, Sean Simpson. Philippartz now up into 24th position. As we look at one of the local riders, is that 54, Mario Farfan? Uh, Gonzalez. So Gonzalez in uh, fourth place. Sebastian Porcel, number 11, just behind him, being challenged by the number 21, Gertier Paul Ant. So we've got the battle of fourth, uh, sorry, fifth, sixth, and seventh between Gonzalez 
Sebastian Porcel, Gauthier Paulin, just behind them on the HM flank KTM, Kevin Strybos down in eighth place, Jonathan Berrigan on the LS Honda in ninth, and Dean Ferris on the Ice One Kawasaki in tenth place. That's uh, Martin Garcia down in 18th place at the moment. Martin Garcia, the two-time uh, Mexican champion, current points leader in the MX1 series. Down in 18th position at the moment, carrying our onboard camera in this first MX1 race. Here, the fourth round of the FIM MX1, MX2 Motocross World Championships, Guadalajara, Mexico. Sticking to the left of the deep rut in the bottom turn. That's why riders are keeping... Uh, to the left there, you see the water hole on the inside just before the Monster Energy Jump. You see the track drying out one or two places as well, but you see the organizers here had absolutely no idea to, but to uh, water the circuit. Got uh, Sebastian Tortelli coming in on the MX Live studio show at around about 2.15, so just under an hour's time. Hopefully the sound qualities are gonna be a little bit better for you guys at home when we uh, do that. Sean Simpson was gonna be a guest, but doesn't look like that's gonna happen now, so we're gonna have to try and find a replacement guest there in the next sort of hour or so but Jeremy Van Horbeek going to be our MX2 guest he's going to be first up he's going to be in and out though for uh, a few minutes and then uh, I'll hopefully be there with Sebastian Tortelli of course a former two-time world champion Sebastian Tortelli 125 and 96 250 and 98 but uh, Porcel our race leader Still only about a second and a half clear, clear of Kumona Sal. Cairoli still third, the Dyke of fourth. Gonsalves is fifth. Uh, in fact, yeah, Gonsalves fifth, Paul and sixth, Paul, Porcel is seventh. Sebastian Porcel, Kevin Strybos still in eighth place. Ninth is Jonathan Barrigan, Dean Ferris is in tenth, David Gonneri eleventh. And twelfth is Tim Prosar, Tanolio, and Matis Caro. Xavier Form, Santu Tienen, Rene Mejia, Martin Garcia, and Samuel Rodriguez. And David Philippot's now up in the 20th place on the Monster Energy Yamaha. Rodolfo Fernandez, Guatemala. He was a guy who won our heat race yesterday. But uh, Rodolfo. Fernandez, the uh, number 63. Down in 21st place at the moment, just outside of the points. So uh, he'll be looking to at least break into the points, especially with the way that he rode yesterday. In terms of the championship. Tony Cairoli, who's still third in the race at the moment. That'll be another 20 points for him. Currently first in the championship. Did I say third? I meant first. Obviously, Cairoli, our championship leader. Uh, he'll be picking up another 20 points. But uh, Gautier Paulan, who's just 17 points behind him, down in fifth place at the moment. So he'll extend his points over, uh, certainly, Gautier Paulan. He'll lose a couple to Christophe Porcel who's uh, now been overtaken by Komada Sal, the Sal, our uh, new race leader, according to the timing screens. But, uh, Martin Garcia down in 18th place at the moment. But uh, yeah, come on us out, our race leader. He's two and a half seconds clear as well of Christoph Porcel. Cairoli is still there in third place, only about a second down. So P Cairoli really taking the challenge to Porcel. He's been in there hanging off the rear wheel of both him and come on us out for the, the first part of this race. 
back with our leaders. Pasal goes through, Paul Sal, Kai Rowley. Is everybody pretty much grouped together there? Looks like that might be the case. No, we've got a back marker. Then Ken Dedeika, Dedeika there. The second rider in shot goes around the outside of Fernandez, number 63. Uh, yeah, Fernandez, Rodolfo. So we're going to have a four-way battle for the lead in a moment at the end of the wave section over the Monster Energy Bridge. Into that left hand of the Invest Trade Bank, we've got, there's Ken Dedeika. He's got, uh, oh, look at that. Kyrone's found a way past the... Uh, Christoph Porcel. So Kyrone then has flicked the switch. He's ready to go. That's his race leader just ahead of him. Number 25, Clement Assal on the Rockstar Energy World Suzuki 1 the MX1 machine. Porcel Kyrone, first and second. And Kyrone making a move up the inside. Wants to get up to that right side. He has to lock in behind the Suzuki of Dassault. Goes to the inside off the jump. Dassault knows exactly where Kyrone is. Almost thought two lines were going to merge there. Deep lines for both riders. There's, uh, well, this is your first four riders. This one not done yet. 20 minutes plus two laps to go. The yellow Suzuki here, 25. Clement Sal leads the 222 orange Red Bull KTM of Kai Rowley. 377. Christophe Porcel there in third, getting over that step up. Dadaika going to the inside, number nine in fourth. All four of them pretty much in the same shot. The long sweeping right hander. Two corners before the finish, just here now. Final turn. Ooh, oh, locking up the rear wheel, getting on the gas. Commander Sal, jumping into the hole. And he takes the, uh, the Monster Energy finish line jump. Purcell taking a long look over his shoulder there to see who that was closing in, whether it was a back marker that he just passed or whether it was the uh, KTM of Kenda Dyker. Oh, Kai Rowley almost losing the rear wheel there as he buried the front end into the right-hand turn. Your first four riders through the wave section. Kyronic all over the back of Commander Sauer. Do we have a new leader out of this left hand turn? I think we do. No, DeSalle doing his best to hold on to the lead there. He goes to the inside. Kyronic looking for lines now. He's going around the outside. Switches it to the inside because uh, it's a shallower route through in this next turn. Pick the front wheel up through the lake. But all eyes on this battle here for the lead. 18 minutes plus two to go. Clement Sal on the Suzuki. Tony Cairoli. That nine really starting to appear now. Through that left turn. But Clement Sal going for his first race win of the year, of course. On that Rockstar Energy Suzuki World MX1 machine. To Sal down in fourth position in the championship. On 105 points, one behind Christoph Porcel. So he will take third place in the championship. A couple of seconds at the opening round in uh, Balkanswad for Clement Sal. A third in the first moto in uh, Bulgaria. Kyrelli looking back to see where uh, Porcel was. All three riders back together again in that right-hander. Turn three. Kenda Dijka just starting to lose the toe a little bit. There in fourth place. Gautier Paulin now in fifth on the uh, official Kawasaki. Dropping Rue Gonçalves down to sixth. Kevin Strybos now in seventh place on the HM Plank KTM. As Kai Rowley trying different lines through the, ra the uh, wave section. And I've refrained from saying it. All weekend long so far, but uh, I'll probably say it next time around. But to Sal, Kyroli picking the front wheels up over the face of that jump. Looks like there's a hole appearing there. Kyroli goes for a tear off and immediately gets filled back in again by the water off the back of the rear wheel of Commander Sal. So Clement Sal then, really having his work cut out, having to work extremely hard to keep Kyroli and Paul Sal at bay. Dedeika 
just went through there just a moment ago in fourth place. And Gauthier Paulin, well, he's a little bit further back at the moment. Here's Gauthier Paulin. Uh, around 15 seconds, 17 seconds, something like that, actually, uh, from uh, Kenneth Dijka. That's your first three, just flashing past the banner there. That's turn three, just past pit lane. It'd just be nice to follow the riders every now and again, if our camera guys can hear us, but... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, 15 and a half minutes plus two laps to go. So, uh, anyway, any which way this race can go. There's our race leader. Clement de Salle. Tony Cairo is still all over the back of him in second position. Christophe Porcel just losing the toe in third place. Oh, actually, sorry, not Clement de Salle. Porcel, but uh, looked to have lost a bit of ground coming out of that third turn. But if he gets good drive through the wave section here, the Mexican wave section. And of course, look at that, Cairoli having to hit the brakes hard. Oh, off the side of the bike there for Clorado Sal over the Invest Trade Bank tabletop. He's got a back rocker. No, he hasn't. Tony Cairoli avoids it. All three riders going to the inside. Cairoli, whoa, a little bit too close to the track fencing as well. Getting a little bit uh, loose as he landed off that tabletop jump, but uh, Clement de Salle with 14.25 uh, on the clock. And those two laps at the top end of the circuit, just trying to pick the lines carefully. He knows it if he holds the inside line and doesn't make a mistake as a uh, Mexican rider wobbles coming out of the turn and goes down. All our three leaders, though, get through there, no problems. That's Kenneth Ica, big keynote. Red Bull KTM down there in fourth place. The number nine on his back. Still hanging on there. Gautier Paulin losing ground down in fifth place. Kevin Strybos in sixth. Gonzalez seven. Guarneri eight. Barragan nine. Tanel Leoc is tenth. Sebastian Porcel's dropped down to 11th position. So I don't know what happened there. Then Mattis Caro on the STR KTM is 12th. Xavier Borg is 13th. And Dean Ferris, David Philippots, Santu Tienen, Martin Garcia. And uh, Renu Mejia. Uh, Mejia. Uh, we've got Rodriguez, uh, Rodriguez and then Rodolfo Fernandez uh, in the final championship point scoring position. Montesal negotiates a back marker and that's played into the hands of him. Or has it? Yeah, Cairoli just manages to get up the inside. And uh, we're hearing it might be a dislocated shoulder for Sean Simpson. So it was him and uh, David Philipparts who crashed through the wave section on that first lap. The two Monster Energy Yamahas then, whatever the reason, coming together. Dislocated shoulder for Sean Simpson, so uh, not good for the Scotsman. So anyway, back with our leaders. And that coming in from uh, Steve Dixon, that message uh, via the... One of my little uh, accounts that I've got going on here. And also a big shout to uh, Ray Chuss as well. Thanks for that, Ray. But um, it's Clement de Look at that. Only uh, what, about a second between him and Kai Rowley. Kai Rowley getting off to a good start in the 350 KTM. Right where he wanted to be. Obviously getting those starts dialed this year. He struggled for starts last year, remember. More often than not, had to come in through the, come in through the pack to pick off the results towards the end of the races. But uh, here he is, 12 minutes to go. Second place at the moment to the Monta So we've got a Rockstar Energy Suzuki leading a Red Bull KTM and a Monster Energy Kawasaki. Three different manufacturers in the top three places. Cairoli looks to go to the inside through the final corner. Just struggling for traction, though, through there. Gets over the Monster Energy finish line jump, though. Porcel pulling another laminate tear off. And Kenda Dijka not out of it yet either. Track here quite gnarly, pretty tough actually. Oh, hard on the brakes into that inside for Cairoli. As he tried to make a move on Clement Sal, the Belgian Suzuki rider. Cairoli getting good drive through the waves as well. Oh, getting a bit squirrely as he bounces away. 
The uh, trick yesterday was to uh, single, double your way through and then mono the next three and then double, double, double all the way through if you could to the tabletop at the end of the straight there. You had to get the last two on the downside in order to get that tabletop perfect. The 450 is obviously a little bit easier for them, but the 250 is a real stretch in the pre-qualifying and free practices yesterday. Rider off on the tabletop there, out of the, uh, pulls on in the track right in front of the leaders. Not a good move for one of the local riders. But oh, the sad has to go offline, buries the front end in the swamp. Almost over the bars there for the Suzuki rider, but managed to keep it upright. But had to take avoiding action of the, uh, the Mexican rider ahead of him, the back marker that he just caught. But he's opened up actually a bit of a gap over Cairoli, who in turn has done the same over Christophe Porcel. So, 10 minutes to go, plus two. Clamont Estelle still leads. He found a way past Christophe Porcel in the early stages of the race. Porcel found a way back, but uh, the last few laps it's been Clamont Estelle. And then Cairoli found a way through immediately as well into second position. It's Cairoli who's looking menacing here. But we know from the way that the 25, Clamont Estelle, how he rides and how hard a competitor he is. How difficult is going to make it for Tony Cairoli to find a way through into the lead and 25 more points to extend his championship lead. Looking good for Kurt, for Clamont Sal though. As he puts five points between himself and Christophe Porcel, that'll move him fourth in the championship to the tune of four points. But again, Cairoli getting good drive coming out of the turn and over the first three waves. But... Uh, having to ride defensive at the end of the straight. Look at that, Cairoli getting over the tabletop. That's the difference there for Clamont de Sal and Tony Cairoli. Cairoli getting the distance and he's getting the brakes on the downside into that next left-hander. And he's able to close in on the rear wheel of Clamont de Sal. And that could be the area where Clamont de Sal finds himself coming undone here and Cairoli going through. That's where Clamont de Sal had to go through the deep pull the last time around hard and choppy underneath the ground here back marker down again just on the inside of the turn doesn't affect the riders as they go through eight and a half minutes plus two to go yellow flags out again in the next left hander Cairoli though, still pushing on. And has he gone up the inside? He does, he moves the Belgian aside. Just through there, two corners to go from the end of the lap. And uh, we've got a new race leader. Tony Cairoli is going to be the new race leader as he comes through over the finish line, jump now. And then Clement de Sout in second position. So Tony Cairoli, a masterful display here. He sat there, his bow, his boat is time. So the question now is, with seven and a half plus two to go, Montesau, will he have anything in the locker for Tony Cairoli? See that, Cairoli doubling his way through there. That's where he was gaining time, and then he was able to keep that momentum going. He gets at the end of the straight here, doubles here, gets the downside, gets the distance over the tabletop, and that's, uh, well, I think the, uh, the old lady's going to get the notepad out. That's all she's going to write again, I think, because... Uh, Looks like Cairoli well in control of this. Yellow flags out over the tabletop. Rider down in the hole there, but uh, Ryder's having to just take avoiding action again, but couldn't quite see who that was. Looks like he's probably just picked himself up there though. Cairoli getting over that tabletop as well. So doing things that other riders aren't doing. Cairoli finding lines somewhere and able to get on the gas, get over the tabletops and uh, get through the, uh, the wave section, top end of the circuit. So Tony Cairoli then, six and a half minutes to go, is your current race leader, having passed Clamont de Salt just almost a lap ago. Christophe Porcel still in third, Dedeika fourth, Gautier Paulin in fifth, but he's a long way down on our leaders.
Tony Cairoli drops down into the dip. Launched himself off the Monster Energy finish line jump. He's got less than six minutes plus two laps to go. And he's already opened up a little bit of a gap between himself and Commander Sal. And the body language there from Tony Cairoli telling you that he means business. He's pulled the pin. He's ready to go and open up that lead. Never know. It might come in handy towards the end of the moto. Porcel there still in third position. Kenderdijker still in fourth. There's Kenderdijker there just running past pit lane at the bottom end of the circuit. And uh, to Sal, poor Sal. Just opened up a bit of a gap over the uh, Kawasaki of Christoph Porcel. Rider still down in that dip over on the bottom end of the circuit. Not sure if it's just a bike stuck or uh, anything else, but Cairoli goes through. On board here with Martin Garcia. This is two corners from the finish line area. He's there in second. That's the finish corner there. Bank to the outside. Then they drop downhill over the step down. And uh, who's that? Is that Guneri? I think that's Guneri. Maybe. So Guneri coming in. That's through turn two. He's pulled off the circuit. Gone into pit lane. Has uh, Guneri. Yellow flags cleared up on the far side of the circuit. So uh, no yellow flags this time around. Here's how it looks at the moment. Cairoli, three seconds clear of Clamada Sal. Christoph Porcel, another five seconds further back. Went for Kenda Dyker's split time to come up, but he's there in fourth. Let's go to Paul and Kevin Strybos, Jonathan Barrigan, Tanel Leop. With Rui Gonsalves, Sebastian Porcel, 10th. Xavier Borg, 11th. Mattis Caro is 12th. Dean Ferris, 13th. David Philippas now in 14th. They had a Sam Tutiena and points on the board for him. And uh, then we've got uh, Ranieri, who we know has just pulled out of the race. Martin Garcia, he's going to go 16th. Then it's going to be Rodolfo Fernandez and Giuseppe Vazquez and Mario Farfan. So in terms of points on the board then, the likes of Santu Tienen, who's down in 29th place on two points, he's going to pick up, uh, what, another six points there? Cairoli at the end of the, the uh, Mexican wave section. That gap around about 2.2 seconds between him and Clamada South. But look at that, Cairoli still getting over that tabletop there, just under the Inverse Trade Bank banner. So too to sell that time around. So maybe he was able to be close enough just for long enough to maybe latch on to one or two of those lines that uh, Cairoli was using. Cairoli, just over two and a half to go. Little wave section down the bottom end of the circuit. Uh, just under the More My Banner. Back marker ahead of him. He almost gets it wrong in front of the uh, five-time world champion and current championship leader. Cairoli eventually going around the outside of the local. A lot of carpet fitters out there in this uh, field, apparently, but uh, Cairoli, certainly not one of them. Having to go around the outside, was that for the parts there gone down in that corner? Uh, look at that, Cairoli streaking out the distance. Where is Christoph Porcel? Not close enough to challenge. Come on to Sal, it would appear. As we wait for our race leader to come through. There he goes. Over the tabletop quite convincingly for him. Has to Sal out to the left. Having to ride his way through the last door. Is that another, uh, that's another back marker? But Tony Cairoli. Oh, Sebastian. Oh, Christoph Porcel. Christoph Porcel's been off. He's uh, taken an off-track excursion. 
He's uh, got a load of green fencing wrapped around that wheel. And uh, Christophe Porcel, well, he came over the line in fourth place. With the Dyker third. And he's just pulled in. So uh, obviously deciding not to ride out there. Because uh, he's going to have three laps in which he could have continued to ride out there and pick up points in this race. So obviously a frustrated Christophe Porcel. There's De Sal. He's in second. So that's why we had a big gap there between Commander De Sal and Christophe Porcel. Caroli working his way around towards the, uh, the finish corner here. The long right-hander dropping downhill. Ruts, bumps, holes, you name it, swamps. Really having to concentrate. Going to be one of the tougher circuits on the calendar for sure this year. Certainly one of the bigger challenges for all of us in more ways than one, you could say. But uh, Cairoli, though, it's going to be three laps to go for him. That's the sweeping right-hander down through turn two. Past pit lane. He'll get the board saying, poor sell out. Unless, of course, it was Sebastian Porcel who's down in 12th position, but it's looked very much like Christoph. We know it's going to be two laps to go next time around. Single, single, single there for about five or six waves for Cairoli, as he couldn't quite get the combination right that time around. Singles his way through, just gets the distance over the tabletop. Here's the Sal on the right now, popping into view. Trying to pick up uh, Les Philippart. Trinity Yamaha rider currently up into 14th position. That was a flash just by the screen there. Kendi Dyker on the screen in the background. That's Mexican TV. But Tony Cairoli just getting a little bit offline. Keeping an eye on the rider in the opposite direction. That would have been Pomona South. He knows he's only got a couple of laps just to bring it home. That's the Sal out of that left hand up through the more my waves. And a big gap between him and Kendra Dyker. It's uh, Tony Cairoli doing everything right at the moment. So uh, Cairoli leads to Sal second, Dyker third, Paul and fourth now. Strybos is fifth. And it's Tanel Leok, best rider of the cheer, uh, championship for him in sixth place for the Estonian Express. Seventh for Jonathan Barrigan on the LS Honda. Eighth, the Kawasaki of Xavier Borg, Rui Gonçalves, ninth, Matis Caro, STR, KTM, tenth, Sebastian Porcel is eleventh, Dean Ferris is twelfth, David Philipparts will be thirteenth now, Cairoli takes the two-lap board. Then uh, Christoph Porcel, well at the moment still there in fourteenth, but you would rather suspect that Santu Tienen, who I believe is still circulating out there on the Ice One Kawasaki racing machine, teammate to uh, Dean Ferris, who's in twelfth position. So this will be a good points all for the, uh, the Finnish team. With Tien in there in 15th, Martin Garcia is 16th, Rolfo Fernandez is 17th, David Guineri, well, he'll get 18th despite being out of the race, first guess 19th, and uh, Mario Farfan down in 20th place. There's Kendra Dyker, Rebel KTM rider, number 9. Actually, doesn't mind the old school circuit. We uh, caught up with him before the race on Friday, and he said that's what motocross is about, tough. Bumps, ruts, mud, all the rest of it. And that's pretty much what he envisaged here after looking at the track on Friday. Because he knew that they would have to put a lot of water down. That's exactly what they've done for race day. And, uh, well, that third place for him. Courtesy of uh, Christoph Porcel pulling in and potentially out of the race, we guess. Coming in for that uh, release of green fencing from the rear wheel whilst in fourth position, third position behind uh, Commander Sal. There's Kai Rowley. He goes through. Working his way up towards the second of the Monster Energy Bridges. Up towards the More My Wave section, Tony Cairoli, our race leader. And there is Cairoli. Working his way through. In fact, Cairoli now. Just a couple of corners from the finish line area, so Cairoli there. Drops down into the hole for the penultimate time. The one lap board gets ready on the left. And Tony Cairoli, the Italian from Sicily, just up on the pegs, looking like he's on the training ground. 
final moto here, uh, final lap of this race. He knows he's got a comfortable advantage around six seconds over Clement Sal. That's him in the opposite direction, just going by pit lane now. Kendedijker, another, what, 10, 12 seconds behind Clement Sal. Cairoli doesn't have to take any risks through the wave section now. Just takes some single, single, single all the way through. He knows he's got a, a decent enough advantage over Clement Sal. There's our race leader just going through. He will hit the Invest Trade Bank tabletop any time now. Just wait for him to come through the right-hander just before the, the local sponsors bridge. Offline there, Cairoli. Look at the square edge there. Cairoli over the tabletop then. Bottom end of the circuit for the final time. Turn seven, the long sweep up, up to the Monster Energy tabletop there. Salutes the fans in the grandstands. There's three big grandstands up there. Fully packed. The slow left here. Turn ten. Whoa, he had to go again there, though, did Cairoli. Through the waves. Just needs to pick his line nice and easily. The long right-hander that is going to be turn 13 and 14 if you want. It's a couple of double apexes, actually. Can't see Cairoli doing anything untoward now. Out of the penultimate turn. And Tony Cairoli. Drops down for the final time. And Cairoli wins moto number one. Pulls a nice knack-knack as well. As he hits the monster energy finish line jump, he wins race number one here in Mexico. <coughs> the Montesal should come over the line in second position. De Sal over the line. Kino. Kandadaika over the line. That's your first three. And uh, Tony Caroli just looking down. Bike overheating a little bit there. First and third then for the two Rebel KTMs of uh, Caroli and uh, Tony Caroli and uh, Kandadaika. The Rockstar Energy Suzuki of uh, Clemente South splitting them. So uh, that'll be okay for him, but he would prefer to have won it to South. Paulan came over the line. That is Caro losing 10th position on the last lap to the hard charging David Philipparts and uh, drops to 11th. But Dean Ferris came home in 12th position on the uh, Ice One Racing Kawasaki. 13th then for Sebastian Porcel. 14th for Santu Tienen. And then uh, 15th for uh, Martin Garcia. Uh, 16th for uh, Christophe Porcel. 17th was uh, Rodolfo Fernandez. 18th for Mario Farfan. 19th Giuseppe Vasquez. And uh, 20th for Renier Mejia. So Cairoli then. Official confirmation. 
Cairoli to Sal, to Dyker, Paul Ann Strybos, to Noel Leoc, Jonathan Barrigan, Xavier Borg, Rugon Salvez, David Philippartz, Caro, Ferris, Porcel, Sebastian. Then it was uh, Santo Chien and Martin Garcia, the first of the Mexicans home, then Christophe Porcel, the Guatemalan, Rodolfo Fernandez, Mario Farfan, Giuseppe Vasquez, and uh, Rena Mejia. Championship lead though, Cairoli now 158. Paulan 134. And uh, De Salle now in third on 127 with uh, Porcel dropping to. Oh, it's back to Dyker now fourth. So Tony Cairoli then with the winner, Tony Clement de Salle second. Uh, kind of just heard from him, the, the sound quality is a little bit poor, but uh, Kendra Dyker was third on the Rebel KTM, and uh, he's waiting to speak to Amy down by the, uh, the work area. Here he is. So Kenneth Dyker then, third overall in this first race here in Mexico. And uh, in terms of him going from fifth place in the championship to uh, fourth, so he moves up a position, pushes Christophe Porcel down uh, a notch and takes his first podium race win or, or per race finish of the season. He's had a couple fourths though, second moto Bulgaria and in Italy, but uh, first time on the box for him. So uh, he'll be pleased, so too will KTM, of course, uh, first and third for the Austrian 